Hello everybody, the Brickologist here with episode 4 of my LEGO Lord of the Rings retrospective. Back in the day, I reviewed all the LEGO Lord of the Rings sets when they were originally released in 2012 and 2013. And with the theme's revival in 2023, I thought it was a good time to take a close look back on these old sets and see how they hold up today. This set here is the Orc Forge number 9476, the only retail exclusive from the first Lord of the Rings wave. You could only get this set at Target. It retailed for about 40 US dollars, adjusted for inflation that's closer to 54 dollars contain 363 pieces and unfortunately I no longer have the box but here is a quick view of what the box would have looked like. Before we get started everybody, please consider giving this video a big like, subscribing to this account, clicking that bell for new video notifications, or becoming a channel member. All of that goes a long way to helping me bring you guys the reviews like the one you're about to watch. 363 pieces later, the Orc Forge set is complete. There are three separate builds here and four minifigures plus some extra accessories. And fun fact, this is the only LEGO Lord of the Rings set that is completely lopsided towards the villain characters. No hero are included here unless you're rooting for the orcs for some reason. The set is the Orc Forge, so fittingly the first minifigure here is just a basic orc. I gotta say, Lego orc figures never quite did it for me. They are serviceable, but their detail was never crazy impressive in my opinion. I do like the face print, I like the torso print, there's pretty much no other detail though. The back printing is okay. The back head print looks kind of creepy. So it's an okay figure, but I think they could have done a bit better. One other orc is included, and I do think this hair earpiece goes a long way to giving these orc figures a lot more life, so this one is a little bit better in my opinion, but all the other details are the exact same. A fully decked out uruk is included. If you want to see a better look at these figures, check out my review for the $30 uruk army set. However, this one is a little bit different because the helmet and the shield have the white hand of Saruman printed on there which is so cool i absolutely love that making these figures way different not technically exclusive because these pieces did eventually come in the tower of orthanx set in 2013 but they were exclusive at the time and i love it it is so so good one of my favorite villain characters from all the lego lord of the rings sets it's just immaculate i love it Last and not least is the only named character included with this set here, and that is Lurtz, one of the main antagonists of the Fellowship of the Ring. And this figure looks pretty awesome for the most part. However, I feel like his skin should have been dark red like all the other Urukai. Maybe it's brown because they want it to look like the mud when he comes out of the birthing pit. We'll talk about the birthing pit in just a minute in this review. But other than that, it seems like the wrong color if you ask me. Now his printing is fantastic. I love the hair piece. The back print is good. And I love his face print once again with the white hand of Saruman. And you also get an extra set of the armor with the white hand as well in this set, which is really good. But it also also demonstrates that his leg print here just looks a little bit off if you ask me. Looks like he's not wearing any pants so that is kind of weird. Other than that though, awesome figure and it's really cool to actually get him exclusively in this set. The first build here is an anvil, which makes tons of sense. You see them in the scene in the movie, they're forging the sword, you gotta have it. Really, really simple design, but it gets the job done. Speaking of forging the swords, the second build here has little station to, well, forge the swords. I do like the drum lacquered silver grate pieces right here. Two more of those Urukai swords are included. The rest of this build is very simple and just a six by six plate, but there are some transparent orange pieces in there to represent the fire. This works out pretty nice for a tiny side build. And here is the Orc Forge itself. I'm going to work my way from this side to this side to kind of show you the process of this set. But first, let's look at one of the most disgusting LEGO play features ever. Over here might not look like a whole lot. This rock formation just has some greeble details. You're probably wondering, Lee, what's so disgusting about this? Well, this is actually the birthing chamber for the uruk specifically Lurts in this set, which is obviously a scene from the movie. 
and they recreated it here. I honestly cannot believe Lego did this. Basically, pull this off, and there's a hole in the back here, and you can just basically push Lurtz out, and then he is birthed. That is just so weird, and my guy here is naked, which is a little bit strange to think about, but yeah, Lego actually made that scene into a play feature, which, as a huge LOTR fan, is pretty awesome. Moving beyond that, there are rock formations throughout this entire set, which looked very good in 2012, slightly primitive by today's standards, but that's not a humongous issue. But this leads into the main play feature of this set, which is basically an assembly line of one function throughout the entire build. Basically, you have this barrel piece right here with the circular tiles that are supposed to be metal, and you can transport them throughout the entire thing, starting with this pulley system. There is a Lego hook and string piece attached to this big wheel up top here that actually looks really good, aesthetically speaking, and quite accurate to the film. Now, you can activate this feature by actually twisting the wheel itself, or there is an additional gear on the back that's a little bit easier to spin. By doing so, it will raise this barrel. My strings are a bit old and kind of loose looking, but for the most part, it still works out pretty well, so I'm happy with this feature. Now, I'm not really sure if this was an intentional feature, but there is a small platform piece right here attached on by some yellow parts that really stick out like a sore thumb, but you actually can extend this out and raise it like it's extending the top platform here, and then rest your barrel on top of that. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but if it was, it makes a lot of sense. Moving on to this midsection here, this design is so simple but very effective. I like the use of parts. There is a small burp in the back there, which is effective, and a torch up top. I like all of that. Additionally, all of these pieces with wood are printed. There are no stickers in this set, which is always a good thing if you ask me. Now, you really have to use your imagination that an orc or somebody is, you know, moving all of this along, but here is the next step of this feature. So you have this ramp here, which once again is attached on by a hideously distracting yellow piece. Not sure what Lego was thinking there. And basically what you can do is pour the metal from this barrel and it should go into this cauldron. Now I gotta say, a lot of times some of the pieces tend to fall out. Actually worked out pretty well there. Only one of them flew out. So not the greatest function in the world, but it works about 70% of the time. So that's not half bad. And that brings us into the home stretch of this build where once again you need to use your imagination of an orc picking up this cauldron and moving it to the furnace section of this design. I do love the flame pieces here and to simulate the fire Lego has given us a light brick which is activated by this switch at the back. Again big blue piece really distracting not sure what's going on with the random colors in this set but when you push on that piece it activates the light brick. Yeah, unfortunately, after 12 years, the battery in my light brick has died. However, here is a clip of that design from my original review back in 2012. I apologize for the horrendous camera work, but at least you guys get to see how that light brick functions. One final detail, this is kind of modular. You can actually split these two pieces into their own separate builds. Again, with the weird colors, at least those ones are covered up now. This doesn't really add any playability to the set, but I feel like if you got another one of this set or made your own mock, it would make it way easier to expand, which is, you know, kind of fun. The Orc Forge was never one of my personal favorite LEGO Lord of the Rings sets. Don't get me wrong, I think this set is pretty cool and I'm glad to have it in my collection. And this scene is pretty iconic in the film, but it is a very quick moment and it's not one of the most rousing moments in the entire trilogy. So I wasn't really clamoring to get this set and honestly, I feel like there were some moments that have never been made into Lord of the Rings, like Minas Tirith for example that have zero set, and it's kind of odd to me we got this one in the first ever wave. My single highest praise for this set is the playability. There is a lot of it, and I'm actually fairly impressed the LEGO designers were able to make such a fun set out of a kind of odd scene. That is a pretty hard task to accomplish, and they did a very good job. However, while the build 
does look pretty good. It definitely is starting to show its age. A lot of the other LEGO Lord of the Rings sets are fairly timeless builds, if you ask me, but this one definitely looks like a set from 12 years ago, which is not my favorite thing. Another aspect of this set I don't love are the minifigures. I actually think this might be the worst minifigure lineup of any LEGO Lord of the Rings set ever made. That's definitely not really saying a whole lot bad because every other set just has such incredible figures, but the figures at this set here, besides the really cool printed armor, are fairly mundane for this theme. Additionally, the value of this set wasn't great as well. It was a decent price for 40 bucks and 363 pieces back in 2012, but the $54 adjusted for inflation price is real bad. Additionally, 180 sealed and 140 out of box are the aftermarket prices. I do not recommend spending that much on this set. Definitely not worth those ridiculous amounts. Overall, this is gonna be one of the more negative LEGO Lord of the Rings reviews you'll hear from me. I like this set, but I don't love this set, which is why it's gonna get a rating of a seven out of 10. Still extremely solid, but not one of the best this theme has to offer. But those are just my thoughts. I'll hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you all so much for watching today's review. Peace out, God bless, bye bye